Guys, in today's video, we're going to be talking about pain receptors. Pain receptors can also be known as nocy receptors. What? Let me give you guys an introduction about pain receptors. Well, they can be they primarily two different classes of nocy receptors. The first class is going to be known as the mechanical and thermal uh, mechanical and thermal class. And the second class is going to be known as the polymodal uh, nocy receptors. So now um, the thermal and the mechanical nocy receptors can also be another form of them can be the thermal receptor potential. Uh, this starts for thermal. Uh, transition receptor potential, I believe, voltage, you know, vadidine, or the uh, transient receptor potential menanol channels. So, this is going to be for coal activity and this is going to be for spices. So, vadidine, such as uh, validine, such as spices, the conjugate spices. Um, these are going to be finely, the thermal and the mechanical are going to be finely myelinated with alpha uh, delta fibers, which are going to have a fast um, delta afferent nerve fibers respond to mechanical stimuli in a sharp or prickling way. And um, the polymodal and NOC receptors are going to be applied by the un, uh, they're going to be applied by unmyelinated C fibers, which are going to have a slightly slow uh, response, um, the slow response, high response to high intensity. Um, mechanical receptors, they, they, or me mechanical or chemical stimuli, and hot and cold stimuli. So they they reply they reply to a high intensity of mechanical and or chemical stimuli or hot and cold stimuli. So the extremes of everything they reply to that. I want to make a quick difference. So the, as we know, this is going to be myelinated AA alpha delta cells. So I want to make a difference that this one is going to be extremely fast. So when I mean fast, how, how fast do I mean? I mean to say 0 .1, 0 0.1 seconds. What can be example of this? But it can be a prickling pain, a prickling pain, a pinching, a very quick, something very quick, uh, acute pain. And this is going to be elect, uh, maybe electrical, electrical uh, pain, a sharp, sharp prickling. It's a, maybe a skin, a skin cut. Um, a the electrical uh, shock or a needle insertion. Uh, what, how about over here? What's over, what's the deal over here? Well, this is going to be above above one second. So what what can be an example over here? Well, it's going to be above. So it's going to be definitely more chronic pain, maybe by muscle spasm. It's going to definitely cause some damage to the tissue, so destruction or ischemia, ischemia of. Uh, uh, tissue so this can be an aching pain a uh, disturbing pain a aching pain a chronic uh, pain a throbbing uh, pain um, uh, so yeah uh, like a burn like a burn or a wound it's a very this is a bit more much more the pollen do, do, model nociceptors um, the, the response to this well the response to this would be of course anti-inflammatories after inflammatories is going to be caused to release the prostaglandins, sodium ions, no, potassium ions, uh, hydrogen ions, histamine is a very important substance, P, uh, brandy kinin, blood vessels, they become prone to breathable, local edema, local, what does edema mean? Edema means the accumulation of uh, fluid in interstitial spaces, redness of the skin, and um, uh, so yeah, then the mast cells at the near the site of injury they release a histamine. It increases permeability and uh, it also the axons of nociceptors they release the sensitized nociceptor stimuli, which has no previous noxious or painful and sensitization process. Hyper hyperglacia is the basis for various phenomena. Increased threshold for pain. So hyperglacia basically it's a concept of increased threshold pain. So more stimulus is required to receive a pain so therefore the body is a bit more Im immune to the process what am i talking over here about the sensitization of the nociceptor so this system which i talked about and the muscles that are released near to the side of injury this is going to cause a um uh, it's going to cause more amount of activated ion nociceptors next thing i want to be talking about is that the nociceptors they can release a sensitized that no nociceptors to the stimuli that was not previous noxious or painful so the axons of and nociceptors release substances that synthesize sensitize the nociceptors to stimuli that were not previously noxious or painful. A sensitization process is called hyperalgesia. Hyperalgesia, as we see over here, wrong spelling but whatever. Hyperalgesia is a basic phenomenon of increasing the threshold of for pain. Um, the nociceptors 
well, what are these guys? These are going to be naked nerve endings. These are going to be, uh, of course, a, in response to a perception of pain, uh, motivation and emotional responses, productive mechanism, and they do not adapt. Uh, so like I said, these are going to be free nerve endings, superficial layer of the skin can also be found in the periosteum, arterial walls, the tentorium, the phallic cerebri, and joint, uh, joint uh, surfaces. What are, um, so what are the main, uh, three stimuluses? Or classification, so mechanoreceptor. The first type of uh, classification is mechanoreceptor, chemical, and thermal, and the other one, of course, as we know, is polydermal. So polymodal. My my apologies there. So sensitization of cross examines. They do not adapt. These are ner naked, free nerve endings, and they have protective mechanism, motivation, and emotional responses, and perception of pain. So, like I said, the perception of pain they can be free nerve endings. They're gonna be in response to cross examines, motivation, and emotional response. And they have protective mechanism. Fast and slow pain, like I said, depends on the myelinated nerve fibers, whether it's A delta or C. Um, mechanical, like I said, very easy. Sharp pain, acute pain, electrical pain. Over here, we have a much more chronic pain, a aching pain, a poorly localized occurs in the second process for a long time. And over here, we have to mention bradykinin in response to polydon. Bradykinin is going to release. Which is the most uh, eliciting, uh, eliciting, um, uh, most pain eliciting, um, pain eliciting, uh, channel, I believe so. Uh, so now, uh, pain pathway, wait, the, so the first, uh, neurons, the second neuron, be the first neuron be located on the skin, if I'm not uh, wrong over there. So then the second place will be the thalamus be the preception of pain um what do i have oh, sorry what do i have over here the after thalamus then i have the i think the reticular reticular formation so now the awareness of the pain um of the pain then i have the i have one more thing which is the uh, the next thing i want to mention is going to be the so the first neuron which is going to be a afferent neuron which is going to be basically a semi afferent neuron It'll, it'll be like a receptor and we uh, no not receptor as a first afferent afferent neuron the secondary will be consistent of of course the thalamus which will be perception of the pain and then the reticular formation will be the alertness and then the after reticular formation will be the um, limbic system and the hypothalamus over here we will see the emotional response the behavior and emotional response to the pain and somatosensory cortex will be the localization of the pain very simple pain pathway so now I want to talk about a bit about the analgesic pain system. The analgesic system is basically the, the opposite. This is the pain inhibitory system. So analgesics are basically um, any types of drugs like opiates or uh, opiates or morphines, which are gonna inhibit the pain, so you won't feel pain at all. Uh, this is gonna be in the peri uh, the peri um, peri pericoadductal uh, gray matter which is going to be between the third and fourth uh, ventricle so this is where it's going to be hidden so this is going to be the reticular also in the reticular formation so basically it manages the system as pain suppression there's one thing i forgot to mention was the first apparent neuron is uh, it's going to be triggered substance p what is substance p basically it does not elicit the pain itself but it is a sensation of a nerve it stimulates the nerves and needs to sense the pain but does not elicit the sensation itself but it definitely does uh, elicit the nerve and needs to sense the pain um the next thing i want to talk about is going to be the analgesic system like i said this is going to be basically suppression of the pain uh this is going to be you can do this basically in the periadocal area in the between the third and the fourth ventricle and also in other main areas in the reticular formation of the brain um we basically send these type of um coronary uh, endogenous opiates morphine like substances and uh, endomorphins and uh, Ecophalans and opiate re re or opiate uh, what do you call it opiate receptors on the afferent and pain uh, pain and uh, nerve fibers. So you basically send opiates on the receptors of the afferent nerve pain fibers, or you send in uh, as morphine like substances such as uh, or endogenous opiates, uh, endomorphins and endocephalans. You reach substance P, which is also a very similar thing. Some side note which I want to mention: the chemical stimuli in the pain process. So chemical stimulus which is going to be stimulating any type of slow pain. Uh, these chemicals uh, excite the chemical uh, type of pain where, where the tissue is damaged, chemical type of pain where the tissue is damaged. That means isothalcholine can be potassium ions. It can be histamine, serotonin, and it can be brandy kinin and uh, acid and proteic. Um, brandy kinin is the most common type of one, the most pain-eliciting uh, chemical, whereas the 
uh, what do you call it, the proliolytic enzymes, these are the ones that uh, probability of the membrane is going to be increased. Um, like I said, pain in pain, there's no adaptations, so you cannot adapt to it. So for example, you can hit a heart pain and then it gradually decreases. It's a pain, it's pain. No, uh, the, 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 this phenomenon is known as hyperglacia. Hyperglacia is basically a high threshold of pain. So basically continuous pain makes you stronger. So like you said, what doesn't kill you make you stronger? So continuous pain is, makes you basically stronger. Pain can be substantial heat uh, due to tissue damage above any 45 degrees. This pain is correlated to the rate the tissue is being degraded, damaged. Um, like I said, uh, you can read it. There are the mainly uh, opiate like uh, uh, structures. You can just put them in the afferent neuron uh, receptor and it will block the pain stimulus. Very simple. Another way uh, is a surgical method, which is known as the chorodotomy. Uh, to chorodotomy of the pain, uh, the sensory tract. So you can just basically, um, when I uh, checked this term on uh, Google, it basically was that. Um, basically, it's a surgical process which uh, disables um, uh, selected pain uh, conducting tracts. So you can disable a selected pain conducting tracts. Researchers, so yeah, coronary or sensory tracts, which is going to be basically it'll disable certain um, tracts. You can say so, certain sensory tracts, whatever. Uh, you get the point. Um, now, what's the next thing I want to mention is going to be the uh, before I, I get into all of this, I want uh, now that I talked about what is the analgesic processes. Um, um, uh, what I want to talk about is the uh, I want to talk about referred pain and wrist pain. But before I want to talk about, it, I want to talk about some pathways. There, there are going to be two main uh, pain pathways on. Uh, so I want to talk about the new the, the spinal uh, spinal thalamic uh, thalamic uh, tracts which are going to be um, they're going to be one fast which is going to be one slow so let me give you a brief interview so entering the uh, spinal cord from the of course the dorsal root why the dorsal root uh, ganglions is because because we already know there's two sort of spinal roots um, because this is the sensory you, you you enter to this sensory the pain uh, fibers will then uh, will then they'll basically terminate uh, on the relay neurons, which is in the spinal cord, probably within the gray matter of the spinal cord, uh, in the in the, in the dorsal horns, via neuro 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 transmitter. Um, it's gonna basically secrete uh, glutamate and another one which is gonna be known as acetal known as substance B. Um, so now the next one is going to, what is the track called? Neurospinal thalamic track. Um, what, what is this track? It's definitely a fast track. So it is going to be definitely a fast track and um, the fa they're going to be fast uh, type and uh, it's going to be alpha A, A delta the fibers. They're gonna terminate in the lam lamina uh, one uh, of the dorsal horns and the transmitter using uh, glutamate. Uh, the second they excite, they're gonna excite uh, second uh, order neurons. of the neurospinal tract. Um, this is going to give rise to long uh, fibers they are going to cross to the opposite side to have a contralateral effect uh, cord through the anterior commissure and then upwards to the to the brain. Well guys this video is getting pretty long and I'll, I'll probably continue this in the part 2 I'll make part 2 of this pain Video, so I just want to give an uh, overall brief video. What are nociceptors? Uh, basically, there are going to be two types. They can be stimulated by mechanical, chemical, and thermal, and also polydomal um, nociceptors. Uh, they are naked nerve endings. They have. Uh, they are not. They don't. They cannot adapt. So there is no gradual decline. Fast and slow pain. You need to know the pain pathways from the first neuron to the last neurons uh, to to the spinal cortex. So the thalamus. Uh, 
Twitter formation and the limit system of That's about it uh, for this.